Hello, this is my project for 08.04 environmental impact. And the problem I will be discussing is air pollution. Um, so the two possible solutions, so the guiding question is which solution is the most optimal for reducing air pollution? So air pollution can be reduced by encouraging people to convert to more fuel efficient or hybrid vehicles, commute by rail or subway, or use other forms of public transportation and carpool. Another solution is air pollution can be reduced by conserving energy. Large amounts of fossil fuels are used to produce energy, going green, using efficient home energy devices, and using clean energy resources. And there are different photos of each different method. My favorite is the Disney's little panels. So there are like the three criteria for air pollution that I came up with are clean air is vital for life on Earth. Human and animal populations must breathe in air from the atmosphere in order to survive. Therefore, it is important for us to reduce air pollution to sustain life. Air pollution can also lead to many other problems. For example, greenhouse gas emissions contribute to warmer temperatures and a result of climate change. Extreme weather conditions, rising sea levels, heat-related deaths, and increased transmission of infectious diseases. And there's a photo of like how climate change could affect our world someday. Um, each world, <laughs> the third point is each year the world is using up more and more fossil fuels, resulting in even more air pollution. And eventually there will no longer be fossil fuels. So producing new solutions early on will not only reduce our carbon footprint now, but it will also help us reduce the uh, air pollution, which will help life in general. So the three constraints of air pollution that make it difficult to implement is, according to the US Energy Information <laughs> and Administration, or EIA, three fossil fuel sources, petroleum, natural gas, and coal, have made up at least 80% of the U.S. the U.S. Is, the United States total energy consumption for more than 100 years. If the U.S. stops using as much fossil fuels as it once did, it may create obstacles for companies and households to implement these changes. <laughs> Additionally, change cannot happen overnight. It could take years or even decades to make a small impact. With hybrid cars, people have to make the decision to switch. Typically, they cost more and people do not always see the advantage. Additionally, if their cars are working perfectly fine, they will not want to switch to a different car just because it's eco-friendly. The same can be said with companies. If there is no government regulation in place and it is hard to implement, then companies will probably not make the switch to more eco-friendly solutions unless it helps their branding. Uh, a third constraint is since air pollution occurs across the globe, how will countries work together to solve the problem? And with no defined borders, like it can eventually spread to other countries. Like this map shows and like the it's just around like the United Kingdom and stuff, like the air pollution spreading like from Poland to France and stuff. And then this chart over here shows where the United States once was in around 1850 with coal and petroleum, natural gas taking up all of it. And then in more recent years, it's been implementing nuclear, hydroelectric, and other renewable resources. And that is by the um, U.S. Energy Information Administration. So prioritization and constraints. I just split this to. Um, I just split this to two graphs. The PowerPoint will also be attached in the file if you can't read it, but hopefully you can. So ranking. I chose number one that clean air is vital for life on Earth. 
Human and animal populations must breathe in air from the atmosphere in order to survive. Therefore, it's important for us to reduce air pollution because um, all the problems with it, like air pollution, it is important and should be number one reason is because of our health. On average, human, humans breathe in around 14,000 liters of air every day. The air may be clean or it could be polluted, but taking that much air in each day raises the chances that it could be polluted. Air pollution can harm acutely, usually manifested by respiratory or cardiac systems, as well as chronologically, chronically, <laughs> potentially affecting every organ in the body, states chestnut.org. So it is not worth the risk of polluting our air, especially when there's not really a benefit and there are other alternatives. Um, and then the second one is a constraint. According to the U.S. Energy Information, EIA, three fossil fuel sources, petroleum, natural gas, and coal, have made up at least 80% of the total U.S. energy consumption. If, it does, if, if the U.S. did stop, it would create more obstacles, which I've already heard. So the, the truth is that fully transitioning to a renewable energy economy will require a tremendous, and some argue, an unsustainable amount of raw materials and land. Renewable energy sources have a lower energy density than fossil fuels, so they often require more energy to capture the same amount of power from other sources per volume, according to Forbes.com. It is important to implement these changes, but it is also necessary to look at the implications that may arise. The third one is, a, is criteria. Air pollution can lead to many other problems. For example, greenhouse gases contribute to a variety of factors, which I have previously mentioned. According to KareenTumble.com, an estimated half of Americans, or around 150 million people, live in areas where the air quality doesn't meet federal standards. Air pollution can lead to many issues. And the fact is that over 150 million Americans live in places that don't meet the federal standards. And that is a, an alarming fact that must be taken into consideration when looking at alternative ways to reduce air pollution. Okay. Rankings four through six. Since uh, the first one is a constraint, since air pollution does ac occur across the globe, how how to, do we work with other countries to prevent air pollution from spreading? So the United States Environmental Protection Act (EPA) again works with Mexico and Canada, which are our closest neighbors, as well as North America, other continents, and international companies to examine, research, and negotiate new ways of dealing with transboundary flows of pollutants. Although it may be difficult for countries to agree, each country should be looking out for the planet's health. The EPA has many initiatives, including the U.S.-Mexico Border 2020 Program, U.S.-Canada Air Quality Agreement, and North American Commission for Environmental Cooperation. Number five, criteria. Each year the world is using more and more fossil fuels, making air pollution even more prevalent. So um, it is important to reduce air pollution. The reason for this is as of BP's 2016 statistical review of world energy, it is estimated that roughly 115 years of coal production, 53 years of oil, and 54 years of natural gas until our resources are depleted. With growing populations and climate change, it is difficult to gauge if this number is even remotely accurate, but it is scary to think that it, it could be nearly gone in a century, what we rely most on. <laughs> number six. Change cannot happen overnight, it is a long process. However, the United States has been working since the 1970s to 
conserve and reduce pop, uh, pollu air pollution in the atmosphere. And although the work that the EPA is doing is amazing, regulation does take time. America's reliance on fossil fuels is still great even after almost 50 years of having this agency. Um, if we stop our emissions today, we won't go back to the past. Greenhouse gas emissions are eliminated quickly enough, though, within a small number of decades, it will keep the warming manageable and the Paris Agreement goals could be met, and it would slow the change and allow us to adapt. Although it takes time to implement these changes, it is crucial for us to act fast to reduce the effects of air pollution on our atmosphere. Strength and, and weaknesses with respect to the criteria and constraints. So the solutions are fuel efficient and hybrid vehicles and other forms of transportation or air pollution being conserved through fossil fuels. Both are great ideas. The first one, um, the first one is relying on hybrid vehicles, which is good because transportation accounts for nearly 28% of emissions and it is the majority. Um, the weakness though is that transportation is not the sole factor. There are major corporations that also release harmful emissions into the air and there is little to do to prevent or reduce it. The barrier for this is getting people to start buying and switching to eco-friendly air vehicles or alternative methods of travel. Not everyone is going to be willing and able to make the switch. Whereas um, reducing like reliance on fossil fuels, um, which electricity is a big component of that, um, it, it accounts for 27% of our emissions in the U.S. Although it is not the only factor as well, it like it is easier to implement actions like legislation to try to um, lower um, the emissions. Um, transportation <laughs> um, and corporations will release emissions not caring about the linear effects, which it is difficult to change, but it is possible. And then one of the largest barriers about uh, like making more efficient energy clean and renewable is that it, it will cost more at, in, like, at the beginning. People will s simply not be willing to pay what it takes to have clean renewable energy because people are already so dependent on fossil fuels. However, it, it is good for it to to switch to renewable energy. The optimal solution. Of the two options selected, reducing fossil fuels by energy efficient methods will have the most significant and immediate effect on air pollution. Much of the air pollution today comes from electrical emissions from burning fossil fuels, coal, and natural gases. Reducing the burning of these harmful products and introducing alternative ways of energy will reduce air pollution and hopefully slow down the effects of global warming. And here are my sources. And some closing remarks. One person can make a difference. In fact, it's not only possible for one person to make a difference, it's essential that one person makes a difference. And believe it or not, that person is you. Um, burning fossil fuels is like breaking up front nurture to feed to the fireplace because it's easier than going out to the wood pile theodore roosevelt once said the environmental crisis is a global problem and only global action can resolve it very commonly once stated each one of us can make a difference together we can make change barbara molowski said the end